Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where you go for songs that came out this past week in EDM from the last little Sunday. This is a little late of a video, but we are still going to go over 20 songs I wanted to talk about that came out this past week. Um, as always, all the songs are in the Spotify playlist down below, if you want to listen to them easily that way, if Spotify is your uh, platform of choice. But uh, let's hop into it. No trash song this week, so nothing I thought it was really too bad. Actually, I thought it was a pretty solid week, all things considered. Uh, but we do have got two songs in bad. We're going to start with uh, Slumberjack and Posage. Uh, with Scout. Um, I don't know, this is just a really empty track and a far cry from the intricate sound designs that I sort of come to know and love from Slumberjack in, in their past. Um, it's pretty much just like a bland tech house track and this is really not their bread and butter at all. And um, yeah, I don't know, this is just a weird one for me. Uh, then we've got Excision and Sullivan King with Bass to the Dome. Uh, yeah, this one I'm just not on board with, sadly. That may just be my opinion, but um, again, I mean, all of it is my opinion, but I don't know. I think the mixing is a little bit more flat here. The drops aren't all that interesting and follows the kind of cliche uh, rock-infused dubstep cliche, or the, yeah, dubstep rock-infused just style. And I just, I don't know. I just thought it was pretty boring, not gonna lie. Uh, but then we're moving into meh songs that I thought were uh, pretty meh. Uh, we've got Wales and Fitch with Beyond, uh, another kind of more mellowed out, I should say, uh, rock-infused dubstep track with this one, but um, to the point where the vocals are a bit of a drag, and they're not quite that, um, yeah, they're not, they're just like at some points, and so, I don't know, the drops are fairly standard, like a one-two kick snare, and uh, the guitar solos aren't too bad, but I uh, just thought it was a little underwhelming. They've got Company with Solar Plexus. The Quorum EP is out now on Disciple, uh, and this is the first track from that upcoming uh, EP, or from that EP that's out already. But uh, yeah, this is just another kind of standard Disciple-heavy dubstep track that I personally never really got along with, um, and one that I didn't like as much, the style at least. Uh, but yeah, with your kind of classic mechanized sound design in there and your big hits, um, this one I just think isn't for me so much. And then we've got Keys and Crates with Hire, uh, a fairly standard clubhouse slash garage track here, or just lounge chill one. And um, yeah, nothing really to write home about. It's grooving, it's moving, uh, but it's just kind of there, I'd say for the most part. They've got Own Boss and Selva with Riot. Uh, Brazil is seriously taking over Monstrat Instinct right now. Uh, and this, I'm sure, would be uh, a hit there in the West er, in that world. But uh, for my Western tinted goggles, uh, this track uh, isn't anything too special. And I actually thought it was quite derivative. Um, the kind of standard structure with little variation within each drop. Um, I think it works well in a festival, but it's not something I would really ever revisit myself. Uh, then we've got Dabin, William Black, and James Droll with In the Cold. Uh, and man, if you thought Dabin and William Black were uh, <laughs> or had a commercial sound before, this song is just straight up pop. Um, this is barely EDM in its broad sense. Uh, this is just a kind of uh, basic pop track, I would say. Uh, and as with comes with a lot of pop, I think it's just sort of there. I don't think it's really a bad track. I just think it's kind of uninteresting and meant to just get streams. So that's my opinion. Then we've got Punctual with Shark Teeth, a uh, dance pop track with a constant driving beat that is very punctual. Uh, that's just a classic kind of sound from them and what they've produced in the past. Um, but yeah, it's fun. It's meant to be played at shows. It's not anything too serious. It's just kind of a, um, yeah, it's just okay, in my opinion. Uh, then we got Ray Volpe and Run with It Isn't Me. The Volpitron Ascends EP is out now on Monster Cat, the debut EP from Volpitron on Monster Cat, I should say. And uh, yeah, um, this <laughs> a lot of the songs before are quite explosive, and I think this EP is as a whole, but um, this song in particular is a bit of a reprieve as it's a bit of a softer kind of future-based track that uh, that's quite dominated actually by Run's vocals here. Um, that being said, I didn't really feel a whole ton from this track one way or another, and I thought it was fairly by the books and safe, particularly, and especially, I guess, for a Ray Volpe track. And um, yeah, I think Volpe's creativity is just insane on his heavier tracks, but on something that's a little bit more reserved like this, I don't think he's shining as much. Uh, but still, yeah, not too bad. And our last song on Meh this week is Laszlo's Water Vibration. Uh, in the return of, uh, I guess, Laszlo's 
returned from his hiatus. He's back from, I guess, three years now of not producing or not releasing anything, I should say. And um, yeah, this is not really the most grand of returns, and it doesn't really need to be in that sense, but I just feel like the track is just a little bit more on the simple side. Um, it is grooving. It kind of got the could uh, just kind of, oh yeah, a bit of a vibe. Um, but uh, yeah, I just felt like there wasn't a ton going on or enough to really spice it up. Um, and particularly, this is one that I think is more dominated by what I know of Laszlo from the past and how intricate and um, unique he can get his sounds to be and this is just kind of a uh yeah it's 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 good so uh but speaking of good uh we will head into the good category as we've got basic with necessity tech the exobolt 10 compilation is out now uh and this song is i would definitely say a bit of a, of a bizarre track all around um structure wise key wise melody wise just feels um kind of all over the place but i do think it worked in that sense it was both like a it's like the chaotic good of a um one of those chart things of chaotic good neutral or whatever and um yeah again super odd track but i think it worked together all in the end uh, it's got bits of sounds of like glitch and uh like dubstep and like weird um other kind of electro sounds and then kind of hard hitting and then a little bit softer and it, i just i thought it worked i guess uh, but then we got Kirby and Cage with Stereo Function. Um, beautiful combination of these two styles here from Kirby and Cage. And uh, their, their sounds just mesh together so perfectly well with the kind of more bass house driven uh, Cage and the more kind of funk house driven Kirby styles uh, that come together really seamlessly and really easily. Um, that being said, though, I do feel like the track was just a bit underwhelming. I do enjoy it. And obviously I put it in good here, uh, but I just felt like there could have been maybe a little bit more there. Um, but um, yeah, I like the drops quite a bit but found the rest of the surrounding atmosphere of the track to be a little lacking, but I still did enjoy it. They've got Kill the Noise with Circles. The Hollow World LP album is now out now from Kill the Noise. And uh, I loved many of the singles heading into the LP, uh, but this was a bit of an odd one for me. I really wasn't on board with the track in the first half, um, but that back end really did feel like it mixed things up and became actually one of the premier tracks of this album, I think. Um, but yeah, just have that weird mix of the intro though that I didn't really love as much. The whole first like drop or two, I just was like, Okay, this is a little strange, but uh, yeah, uh, this is also a weird mix of a whole bunch of different sounds and styles, a conglomerate of a bunch of different, um, even stuff that Killer Noise has done on this album already. And uh, in the end, though, I did like it. I didn't. I think. I think it was good. They've got Apache and uh, Magugu with Revenge of the Orchestra, uh, another orchestral rap trap sound from apache here um yeah really solid sound design as always and uh, i do think he let up and kind of didn't do as much of the orchestral pieces in this song which is funny for a song called uh, revenge of the orchestra but when they do come in they kind of are really predominant and very just like blah, in your face and, and then the focal point of the track and so yeah i, th I thought the, the vocals also match the tone of the track really well and um that's that then we've got Affinity, Roy Knox, and Skyel with you uh, is the name of that track. And um, I'm glad to see Affinity take more of an intensive approach to his mellow dub production uh, on this track. And particularly that's likely, or I guess attributed to Roy Knox here being on this one as well. And um, yeah, I wasn't blown away by the track, uh, but I did enjoy it a fair amount. I thought I was like, oh yeah, this is just a solid one for sure. Uh, I also really love Skyel's vocals, so that was a huge uh, plus for me. Uh, then we've got Direct Out of My Head, uh, a new self-released garage track from Direct, uh, and it's just more of the same of his kind of solid production, um, just, yeah, it's just, it's just Direct, it's great, and that's why I like it a lot, uh, because I just, I just love everything that Direct puts out, honestly, personally, and so, um, yeah, this is the definition, I think, for me of, uh, don't change what isn't broke, so, solid track. Then we've got Karma Fields, Kaito, and Alita with Get It, a uh, simplistic and relaxed house track here with a lead synth that is uh, quite tropical uh, in, in that it kind of mimics the sound of a steel drum, I would say. Uh, it's a fairly linear track, but one that leans into it being more consistent rather than a derivative, which can come with the linearity of a certain track. But uh, yeah, also probably one of the lightest songs uh, just uh, tone-wise from Karma Fields probably ever. Uh, so it just doesn't quite feel like Karma Fields, but I do think it's solid. It does have all the backing sound design and production that you get from a good Karma Fields one. Uh, then we've got Night Punk and Yana with Feel This Way. Uh, this has also got to be, in terms of a first or the most of one thing, um, Night Punk's most commercially viable track yet. 
it is very much his still breakbeat style, and um, that's one that you kind of come to know and love from Night Punk, but it's uh, mellowed in something more that I think people can get on board with a lot more. And so, uh, it, yeah, it's a great introduction to Night Punk as a holistic track into what could be a greater uh, exploration for someone that's new that hasn't heard him before. But uh, yeah, uh, it's not one of his most creative hits, but uh, still solid nonetheless. And our penultimate track of the week is Bad Computer and Bianca with Land of the Living. Uh, Bad Computer's run of uh, more commercial sounding tracks has really worked out for him, I think, as of late. Um, it's the perfect blend of his kind of nasty synth melodies and um, just a more approachable tonality to the track. And yeah, this is just another incredible track from Bad Computer that I was really on board with right from the get-go. And my number one song from this week is still in good. It is Eddie and Lights with Pocket Knife. I uh, love the production from Eddie here, and the vocals from Lights are absolutely stellar. Uh, it's a dark and winding track with a quite a, an engaging storyline. They don't really quite hear all the time where it's talking about. Uh, I trust lots of people, but I still carry Pocket Knife all the time. And it's something that I thought was uh, was really fascinating uh, that I hadn't really heard before. And it is a nice uh, break from the kind of just standard relationshipy kind of <laughs> vocals and lyrics that you get from a lot of people. But uh, yeah, this is probably my favorite Eddie track to date and I think it is solid but uh, yeah let me know what you think of any and all of these songs in the comment section below but other than that I am Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another video